sleep and we're gonna be starting off game number two of marine lord versus b it is a roost mirror on four legs so keep an eye on those deer ladies and gentlemen because they're gonna be chasing after them trying to get that bounty and uh, there's plenty of them to be had looks like we are gonna have b on the northern side with the blue and down south marine lord in red as you pointed out scouts train a little slower than before so mm -hmm. the use of your initial scout is gonna have an amplified importance and as core is showing us marine lord he's opting to go for a lumber camp not yeah. a hunting cabin so very much different approaches here taken by the two players in dark age yeah, so of course, you got a little bit of gold generation there from that hunting cabin. And we'll see which player gets set up on a water. Part of the reason why we don't see feudal pressure so often on this map is uh, when it gets roost is, okay, you can knock out the dock, great, but they're still going to keep gathering that, that fish, right? So their economy is still going to be super strong, uh, at least for a while. Looks like we do have two wolves picked up on the right side over here by Marine Lord. It's going to be difficult to keep track of the bounty for both players. It's 70 and 80 right now. Via Barrel yeah. is on the way for B here. He's just going to get another wolf for himself. Looks like it's a head-to-head -head game right now in terms of bounties. Well, if Marine Lord finds an additional wolf over here, suddenly it's going to swing in his favor. Yeah, so we can see B's there getting his deer, but Marine Lord has spotted it. And they're going to start fighting over this. Boom. B gets the first one. And now it's kind of a stare down as B brings his <laughs> other scout in. Yeah, it's going to help B to get that second scout in. Ooh, now you have to do the math. This is tricky. You want to be landing the last shot over here. And uh, this one is joined away by B. Nice little move over here. Marine Lord not really paying a lot of attention to those. Ideally, he would just turn around and land the final hit. But that's not something he's doing. And this could be a second wolf picked off oh, here. Oh, maybe by that B. one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, who got it. I think B might have got it. Yeah, B has gotten got the second one. one as well. Yeah. I wish there would be like either a like a for both players to see like the blue and red, either gold, either like a zero or a plus twenty five, so you just know who got it. Because sometimes I can't tell when I'm trying to deny it, but I guess for Roost they can see. Uh, exactly. Um, Two twenty bounty right now for B. Yoinking away two wolves from the back of Marine Lord Scout, whereas for Marine Lord, he is down to 165, which was, I think. Yeah, it is. Yep, and we see a, a dock already online. Who's ahead in, in the fish production? It looks like it's going to be a Marine Lord right now. Indeed, Marine Lord. Um, he has the dock, he went for the lumber camp, so this is something that's expected from him. Whereas for B, he went to the hunting cabin, so he's gonna have a delayed dock, but you see he's dropping some wolves back at home, mm -hmm. just now starting to add the fishing eco. And to be honest, for B it might have been worth it, because he has wheelbarrow over Marine Lord. It's not even the bounty difference that matters here, it's the wheelbarrow difference that's going to come in clutch. Well, it also helps you run out and build docks and walls as well. Mm, uh, and yeah, we do... Do see B dropping the the wall segments down so early as we kind of expected might happen. Interesting to see right there by the stone. I'm not sure if he got that completed, but I think it's fine. He's also at tier two bounty as compared to Marine Lord only staying at one. That's going to buff those hunting cabins a tiny bit as Core has shown us. Not really a big thing, but it's a small little advantage. And in a mid or matchup, you're always looking for those small little bits and the pieces yeah. that you can salvage. A single small piece of advantage in a mirror is much more valuable than it is in a non-mirror matchup. Yeah, and as you talk about, you know, kind of seeing what is different, looking at the map, the relics look very evenly distributed across the middle. I really like the spawn of those. Looks like it's a fair chance for everyone involved. Gold mines looking fairly similar. It looks like maybe it's a little more in Marine Lord's base, perhaps, as far as gold is concerned, but pretty close. Oh, look at that scout getting caught! Is he gonna die? Oh, oh he's gonna nice. get taken down. And he gets those sheep. Uh, B lost track of that scout. That scout was automatically attacking villagers out there. Marine Lord trapped it in there, gets the kill, and also gets two sheep for his efforts. You know, that should count as bounty, right? He killed the horse. That's that should count as bounty. <laughs> How much? How much a bounty for a horse? A horse? That's gotta be like a hundred gold at least. Don't oh, give yeah, me so ideas. I, <laughs> I just like bounty. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine uh, getting a hundred gold for every single horseman you killed. Look at this walling style here. 
Green Lord, he's uh he's going for an artistic style, just separating out his walls. <laughs> they don't have a whole lot of line of sight. And here comes B, he's got three villagers. And I have a feeling they're not out here to gather. Yeah, I mean, there is not much to gather over here. They will be spotted by the scouts of Marine Lord. If it is a, for a dock, it's a big investment. Three villagers being pulled for a sneaky dock, that's a big investment. And it wouldn't work because Marine Lord already has the walls up. So one has to wonder whether this is for a tower. But then again, that's not something that's uh, that makes any sense, essentially, against the Roos. The because dock. they don't need to drop off fish. I feel like Ooh. he's going to regret how he built his walls right about now. Yeah. <laughs> Cheeky little spot there for B. He found an opening. Can the scout get there? Oh, uh, no. Uh, oh, he can't block it. He'll lose a villager. He'll lose one vill, I think, there. The small advantages, those small pieces, that's what matters. Distracting the scouts as he runs back. Man, is that... That villager is booking it. <laughs> uh, it it's a price that he's willing to take, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Just in time. Not fast enough. Okay, so Marine Lord's kind of prepared. He's already got a lodger there. He's going to camp that dock, but he does have to respond to this. Uh, he's going to start torching that down with his villagers. So I'm not sure how much value B is going to get out of that dock. Yeah, indeed. The problem is that you go for your lodger attack ship. You're going to have the defense, but there is a second yeah. lodger attack ship that Marine Lord is going to pull. So he's going to have the advantage in the ship numbers. And one thing that's very smart that he's doing is pulling units to burn down that dock. The attack ships take a tremendous time to take down the dock. So you pull your scouts, you pull a horseman, even a villager is in there, just so that you can take this dock down as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, he will receive healing uh, from his dock here as he fights defensively. Uh, we've got a lot of torch damage going on there, so I'd be surprised if he's able to save that dock. Yeah, it feels like this is only a distraction from B's side, though, because he's also expanding towards the right side. There's going to be one mm -hmm. Lodiat actually popping out. You just want to focus down that villager fit at this point. You can't save he's the dock. Oh, he's going to try to snipe fishing ships. ships. Yep. Could work. It doesn't take a ton of time to take down a fishing ship with a Lodiat attack ship. Yeah, how many volleys is it? I think it's two or three. One. I think it's three. One. That's been more, more than three. that, actually. Yeah, he's not gaining this, so... Yeah, as you mentioned, though, like maybe this is just the ultimate distraction, right? Uh, but I don't know. I find, find it hard to believe you can distract Marine Lord a whole lot. But uh, B has expanded to his second pawn already. I'll have to keep an eye on this and see if he's able to. Oh, a wolf there. A little uh, bonus gold. As uh, now he did force Marine Lord to invest in. I think he had two lodges there. Yeah, that's one of the things that you can consider on a map like this. If you invest into a dock and one combat ship and your opponent invests into three, four combat ships, then you have forced a pretty big investment from your opponent with a minimal investment from your side. So the trade of resources or the efficiency of the resources being used is in the favor of B, potentially. Yeah, and they're also... Uh, Boring Lord does have horsemen now on the map. I'm not sure if B does. It looks like B does have a second town center. Uh, so... We've got the villagers right now. He's going to be booming up with that, but Marine Lord currently has the, the villager advantage. Looks like that dock's going to get... Uh, is that going to get burnt? No, he has a lodger there, so he'll be fine. Yeah, he's going to have a lodger attack ship. He's going to be able to protect that. And he's going to be controlling two pawns plus two town centers. A greedy approach taken to the game, but it could pay off, especially because he's not going to be delayed to Castle Age if you take a look at the resources. So he's going to have the equal <laughs> lead. And Being also Castle Age. We got Marine Lord with Ooh. his double docks versus this. So, yeah, I mean, it's always a game of who can get away with the greediest stuff, right? And right now he's probably okay. Assuming he scouted that pond, uh, no walls over there. So that's ripe for a tower or a fishing ship. Oh, but oh, he's able to sneak Ooh, He finds an opening. Nice. And B can't stop that. Or can he? No, the dock is going to go up. Vol's incomplete. The second dock is coming up. And that's the key thing here. I don't think he's gonna get the second dock though, or at least not this time. He's gonna have to pull the villager back, wait for a combat ship to come in, and then try again. But it's gonna be an annoyance, and right now, Marine Lord has the eco lead, both going into Castle Age. Relic Wars will also play a big part in here, especially because B is not going for the Abbey. He's going for the High Trade House. A beautiful High Trade House it is. I noticed that Marine Lord did get his uh, first wood upgrade uh, there, as far as an H2 eco upgrade. There's that trade house, and he'll be getting some deer from that. How much gold and is that high trade house going? 
Uh, give me an right estimate. Right there. Uh, 92. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at the cheating out there. That's unfair. Do you want to know how many count. times I've played I've played Roos? I'm a bad person to ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Resident Roos main. Speaking of Roos mains here, looks like Marine Lord, despite being a French main himself, he is confident with the Roos out here. Another sneaky dog in the only blind spot on that northern pond. This is going to make life very painful for B. Yep, and uh, that age three difference uh, right now, B is is up. Oh, Marine Lord is still aging up. It gives him a little bit of time, but Marine Lord falling right behind him. Is he also going with the high trade house? No, he's going Abby, so he's gonna be able to pick Abby. up the relics rather easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of yeah, I feel like that's B, gonna though. be pretty big. That's a B's... lot of steel. But... B's transition to Knights. I'm just wondering whether he has the eco to sustain production on those. Because his fishing eco is going to get destroyed in a second. I think he's going full knights is probably what he's going to be doing here. But losing that fishing eco would be bad. Looking at the villager count, still pretty close. B's four down right now. But here we go. We got knights being trained out. Looking at his uh, eco, it looks like he's macroed pretty well for it. Green Lord's got 1k food in the bank. Not a, enough gold right now. Yeah, gold is an issue for him, and he can't add his own knights, and that's a great concern. Right now he's playing horsemen, but his game plan is to pick up the relics right now with the warrior monks. But if the knights are out on the field for B, and Marine Lord can't yeah. match them, he won't be able to pick any of those relics up. So that abbey is going to go down the drain, because it's going to be nearly useless. We see his knights showing up, but looks like that first one got trapped there. He's going to be idling those villagers, though, and that idle time will really add up. <laughs> Look at those villagers. We're going to engage there for a second. Yeah, it's a balance on the water and the land on this map all the time. And Marine Lord is winning the water big time now, devastating the fishing eco of B on all ponds, essentially. But There's a dock meantime, on the northern one, too. Yeah, exactly. But B, in the meantime, he's the one doing eco damage on the land, so that kind of evens out. Yeah, he'll, but I, I don't know. I feel like having the water is typically better on this map, so if B's just giving up all of the water, he needs to do something really deadly on land. I guess it depends. I agree with you. Water, having safe water is very valuable because you have an unrateable eco. That mm. being said, you don't want your entire land eco wrecked like Marine Lord's eco could possibly be. A lot of lumberjacks here exposed and the night numbers are increasing for B rather than decreasing. Yep, so this knight's drawing, not only picking off a few, but also getting some idle time there and uh, less wood means less boats. Oh, and look at that. The, 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 the town center only holds 15 villagers now, right? That was a change this week, and we see it playing out right now as those villagers get trapped outside the town center. Hopeful of Volo. Yeah, Marine Lord isn't going to get that first relic. Now going back over here. Look at that. Only two fishing ships out there for B. Marine Lord has a much better fishing ship count. Then again, his entire lumberjacking eco is idle. Villagers being slain. 15 in the town center. A bunch of villagers getting slain. And... At the end of the day, when the dust settles, it's an even eco count between the two players. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see the, the relics. It looks like Marine Lord was able to snag one of them. B has two at the moment, so they're currently racing for those as the Knight's just going to keep running around, drawing some good idle time for those villagers. Yeah, and that's the key thing here for B. He is picking up all those relics. So once again, Marine Lord, he went for the Abbey. He wanted the relics. He's not going to get any of those. Whereas for B, he has the high trade house giving him the passive gold income, the extra deer to work with. And also, he managed to snack two relics, just not bringing in the third. Look at the amount of food that Marine Lord has. <laughs> 3k no right gold, now. Right? Yeah. You but have that fishing eco with nothing else. Yeah, if B was sitting on that gold mine, uh, I think that would be much more impactful right now. Uh, he might not even realize, you know, how gold strapped he is. Although Marine Lord could be selling it as he hits 4K food right now. But look, uh, once again, we've got a large mass of villagers idled using that Wolo to kind of box those knights out. Yeah, nice rates coming in here from Beto and the idle time is getting worrisome for Marine Lord because you're going to be floating a ton of food, but you need other resources in this game as well. And the damage that he's taking on land is starting to add up. Barely any villagers left alive here at this point. Yeah, we see B is now ahead in the villager game. Uh, it looks like that tower did get upgraded with the spring gold emplacement. So we hear that handing out some shots. Some low HP villagers up there. Like, look at that. He can pick off a few of those. Yeah, look at this. 29 oh villagers. Gosh. And 
This is so many bills. This is bringing in a completely different problem. It's the fact that, you know, yeah, sure thing you have an insane amount of food, but you also need other resources like gold. Sure thing you can sell some, but even stuff like stone, for example, for future keeps. And when you are so limited in villager count, it's going to be so difficult to grab those. Yep, so he's just sticking on that wood line. He just keeps picking off villagers one after another. Uh, but he is also booming up on that water. Well, he doesn't have a lot of wood. He's got, he could sell his food. I don't know. I think he needs to sell food at this point. That's a lot of food. Yeah, that's a lot of food. He just can't do anything with it because he doesn't have any other resources. I think the reason why B is pushing those lumberjacks so, so hard is because he wants to make sure that his opponent can't make any new combat ships so he can possibly reclaim the waters. But look at this. Sacred Sight victory now triggered. And Marine Lord sitting on 5,000 food. He can't do anything against that because he's being overrun by knights. Yep. I, I think he's doing exactly what we had kind of figured when B hit H3 and he was losing water. And we saw him like pumping out the stables. It's like he needs to deal some huge damage on land. And I think he's done a considerable amount. I mean, look, look at the villager difference right now. Uh, B is up quite a bit. Yeah, he has a second TC to compensate for the fishing eco, mm -hmm. to be told, yep. so that's definitely something that helps out. Plus three relics and two sacred sites also helps out quite tremendously here. And of course, the fact that he wasn't really losing villagers on land, sure thing he lost his fishing eco, but so many villagers were killed here by B, and you get the feel that the overall eco killed is probably larger by B than it is by Marine Lord. Well, and there's still the boar that can be gathered. As we see, the boar was just, I think, killed right there by B. So if he wanted to, he could go for that. And look at the knight counts right now. 16 knights for B versus the eight of Marine <laughs> Oh, Lord. he wants to hunt. <laughs> He's going for his opponent's deer. Yeah, I mean, he just wants to delay farm transition as much as possible. He doesn't have fish, so he needs every single bit of food he can grab. Marine Lord, he is no short of food. He's got 5,000 in the bank, still lacking a market to balance his eco out with, and he's showing in the night numbers because he doesn't have the gold to match the numbers of B. Yep, and we see those knights just pulling back in this round. There we go, a charge, and he's got the numbers. So he's got the military numbers, and he's got the economy numbers. So if he could just keep... You know, picking off a unit there here. He 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 can afford to lose some of his knights, honestly, under these town centers and stuff, but you can see he's just gonna keep charging on in here. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't want to fight the knights, he just wants to keep picking off villagers here. Looks like he's confident enough to take the engagement here against the knights. He does have the Saints blessing with those warrior monks. Vor uh... Warriors fortitude still missing for Marine Lord, and he just taps out of this one. B striking hard here on four lakes, losing all four pawns. But having a swifter transition to a land army just wrecks the entire land eco of Marine Lord, secures game number two. And definitely in a mirror matchup, it's always interesting to see the difference in strategies, right? Marine Lord really focused on controlling all of that water. And when I think B kind of, whether it was in his plan to give it up over time or, or what happened, he had made a decision at one point that I'm just going to stay on land, spam out knights, and just keep raiding my opponent. And that's what he did. And that was, was able to be enough for him to win this game. And it's the duality of this map that we are looking at. It's the fact that even if you win all...